How you doing? This is Ivan with Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People and I'm back with another idea to help you live more consciously. Today I want you to take the time to think about someone who you really dislike. Nay, someone who you may even despise. What is it that irritates you most about them? Is it that they are inconsiderate? That they don't listen? Or maybe that they are overly narcissistic? What if I told you that it is entirely possible to even learn to like these people and that it's actually in your best interest to do so. Don't believe me? Well, if you give me a few minutes of your time and if you make a sincere effort, you will see why other people, especially ones that irritate you, hold the key to immense understanding of yourself and the world. See, one of the main problems is that we are more conscious of other people's behavior than we are of our own. We don't deeply realize that we are the source and cause to how we process reality and therefore pass on the responsibility to external sources. We take our moods, thoughts, feelings, emotions to be who we are and we are completely lost in them, meaning we are identified and derive our total sense of self from them. And most people will take whatever thoughts, emotions and moods that they are having in the moment to be their identity but how could you be your thoughts, emotions, and moods if you can observe them? Let that sink in for a bit and contemplate the ramifications of this realization if you have never done so before. Who you really are is the pure awareness that is beyond any label that can perceive these inner manifestations. And if you can't psychologically divide yourself in two, meaning an observer and observe side, you will be in a state of identification, which is to be unconscious because you are under the power of your thoughts and emotions. You take them to be who you are. And this is to live a life of reaction by being a slave to life and all its events. No actions spring from our own doing and every action is provoked externally. If you learn to sharpen your awareness after much hard work on yourself, your thoughts and emotions become like objects to you, objects that you can freely observe without judging and condemning them. If you can reach this stage in self-development, you will be on the road to really understanding yourself. All right, now let's get back to the people who you dislike and irritate you. Think of all the reasons why they irritate you. All right, do you have a nice big list? What if I told you the major reason why those things irritate you is because you yourself possess those very things that you hate. Well, if you're like most people, you won't be able to see it. You won't want to. You will say, I'm never late. I'm always considerate. I am nice. I am thoughtful. I don't gossip about others. I don't boast or brag about myself, etc., etc. The reason that other people irritate you is because somewhere deep inside you, these ugly manifestations are lurking. You can call it the content of your unconscious mind if you like. And we have thousands of mental pictures that prevent us from seeing the ugly side of ourselves. It's like we have blinders on. But you can easily see they exist because you will project them onto others. And this way you can slyly pass on the responsibility to something else. So you really need to see that you are the cause to everything. What do I mean by this? I mean that we all live in our very own psychic world. So we make contact with the physical visible world by means of our psychic invisible world. And if you really contemplate it, you will see that our psychic world is even more real than the so-called physical world, which can easily be distorted through our physical senses. Do you not spend your whole day lost in your thoughts, emotions, feelings, and moods? all of which are invisible from people. So it's easy to see then why in actuality we are all completely alone and we feel no one understands us. How could they? So when you see a person, you merely get a visual impression of that person through your eyes and whatever feeling you have towards them springs within you. If you look at a stranger and suddenly feel an unpleasant feeling, they may have provoked it, but are they the cause? Is this something that you can really ascribe to this person? 
Or is it something inside you that is unpleasant? What could they be possibly be helping you to see within yourself? If you learn to see yourself more objectively, you will begin to see all the things that you only saw in the other within yourself. And it's quite a shocking thing to see all the beautiful images that we had of ourselves be destroyed when we let a ray of light of consciousness in and you can get a glimpse into the parts of your psyche that were always left unobserved and now the unobserved is observed all of a sudden you see that you lie that you gossip that you criticize that you are inconsiderate to others just as much as the people that you condemn and this is what it means to voluntarily suffer carrying the cross if we can sincerely see and accept the ugly side of ourselves we begin to heal ourselves and our neurotic behaviors once clearly seen hundreds of times begin to soften their hold on us they begin to be flushed out out of our system so what happens when all these false images of ourselves are clearly seen simply our relationship to ourselves and others naturally changes we get quite a different feeling of ourselves a more real feeling so it's like magic when all of a sudden the things that irritated you about the other person cease to upset you and now you can understand and relate to them because you can literally place yourself in their shoes how could you get mad at them for something you yourself are equally guilty of you will also feel a sense of compassion because you see it's not really their own fault they just are not conscious of themselves as Jesus would say father forgive them for they do not know what they do and another very strange thing that happens when all those nasty things that you ascribe to them fall away you may actually find things that you like about them because now you are seeing them in a different light and now you are not perceiving them in a purely negative light so you will see things that you may admire so it's quite an extraordinary and sobering experience to see for yourself that it's possible to like things that you disliked and dislike things that you previously liked. This just means that you are becoming more inwardly flexible because you are becoming less identified to all the images and attitudes that used to give you fixed opinions on everything. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's topic. If you did, please help me out and hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And don't keep me a secret. Share with anyone who may find my content valuable. Until next time, many blessings to you. Peace.